you know, because I'm God. And anyone to disagree, I'm the God of me. And you can't tell me who I am. I'm going to let him finish. Come on, guy. I had to. Come on. That's, that's, hey, that's an old school Kanye joke. Somebody got it. There's a lot here, you know. But the big statement right at the outset, right, which is quite disturbing, is I am God. What he's saying here is just horrifically inappropriate. We certainly should know better, right? Like, as somebody who professed to be Christian. I almost didn't make a video about this, guys. I figured, man, what more can be said about Kanye's falling away from the faith? Other channels, other brothers of mine have done some really good videos on this, and you've probably seen them already. But then it occurred to me, you know what? Some of the things that Kanye said, which, by the way, is absolutely blasphemous, it actually helps us to understand, understand our scriptures even better. So let's pay close attention, because maybe Kanye's got some good points to make, or maybe his mischaracterization will help us know our God better, and also answer these objections when someone else makes them in our own circles. Amen? If you're new here, welcome to Wise Disciple. My name is Nate, and I'm helping you become the effective Christian that you were meant to be. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and if this video blesses you, would you do me a favor and share it with someone else so that we can continue to get the word out about this ministry? It would really help me. I'd greatly appreciate it. Now, finally, check out some of the awesome discounts we're running at logos.com forward slash wise disciple. I've partnered with Logos. It's an amazing app. If you want to study the scripture and get down deep, the link for that is below. What is the difference, though, when you hear, and music is like life, you know what I'm saying? And life, you're kind, of, you're kind of like this, you know what I'm saying? And some people try to put you into a yesterday mode. You know, at one point, yay, we hear, and this is all you. We hear, you know, Jesus is king. We hear this, but that's all you. Then there's sometimes you just want to say, man, not it, but you just want to say, man, this is what I'm feeling right now. Are you in that space where you're comfortable enough to say, this is where I am right now. I'm still a man of God. I'm, Jesus still is king, but this is vultures right now. This is where I am. It is, but I, you know, I, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I didn't see Jesus show up. So I had to put my, uh, my experience in this world, my experience with my children, my experience with other people, my experience with my account, my experience with my brand, and my experience with the level of music that I was dealing with in my own hands. Mm -hmm. So Kanye says he prayed, but Jesus did not show up. So now he has a problem with Jesus. That's interesting. And maybe he'll get more into what he means by all of this, but this reminds me of another guy. Uh, the, the man on TikTok, I reacted to, you know, one of those uh, deconstructing TikTok videos, and he basically said the same thing. He said he reached out to God, he prayed on multiple occasions, but God never showed up. And in the case of the man on TikTok, he concluded that God does not exist. Why? Because God didn't do what he wanted. It sounds like the same thing here with Kanye. So, in a moment, I'm gonna let him finish. Come on, guy, I had to. Come on, that's, that's, Hey, that's an old school Kanye joke. Somebody got it. Um, but in the in the case of Kanye, let's just try to hear him out. Let's just try to listen, though, for maybe some assumptions, because it sounds like there's an assumption under there that when I pray and ask God for something, he needs to do it or else there's a problem. Is that actually what the Bible teaches, though? That's what you need to ask yourself. Like, a lot of times I just feel like in our society, in America, you know, people... Christians, we depend on Jesus so much that we won't put the word in ourselves. And the main thing that wait, 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 sorry, I usually don't stop this quickly. What did he just say? Let me, let me, let's replay that for a second. Mm -hmm. Like a, a lot of times, I just feel like in our society, in America, you know, people, Christians, we depend on Jesus so much that we won't put the word in ourselves. And the main thing, just, he said, sometimes we depend on Jesus so much that we don't put the word in ourselves. What does that mean? If he's speaking as a Christian, like, when, when he talks about the Word, like, he's talking about the Word of God, right? The, the, the Scriptures, the very Scriptures that we have in our hands when we read our Bibles. So he's saying when, that we don't read our Bibles because we depend on Jesus too much? Is that what he's saying? I don't, did you guys understand that? I'm, I don't think I got that. that really, that I don't rock with it. It's like, it's just always like, I'm going to pray for you. And it's just like, you can actually physically do something yourself, too, more than just pray. And we're so in this mentality that that's all that needs to happen, but we ain't, we ain't praying our way out of prison. Mm -hmm. We ain't praying our way out of the abortion clinics. We ain't praying our way to get our land back that was always ours after gentrification, after the Harlem uh, Renaissance and Black Wall Street was burned mm -hmm. to the ground. 
them prayers ain't working. We're going to we have to apply actual physical building partnerships. Hands and, it, and it don't start unless we could really be real with each other and say, this is what I did. This is what I did. Like, I mean, look at this. I know I'm not going to third rail y'all interview, but look at the power of what happened when me and Kyrie was on the same page. See, that's what's scary. But what they do is they put us each in a silo and say, your grandmother going to lose her crib and this kind of, you know how I many threats we've been dealt, dealt with? And I didn't pray my way through them threats either. I had to get up and do it myself. Boy, this, this, is, this is sad to watch. I, I'm just remembering when Jesus is King came out. You remember that? And Kanye was going around and proclaiming his faith in Christ. I remember all the Sunday services, you know? And then now here we are. What is this, like four years later? five years later, something like that. This is where he's at. I know those of you in my audience, you know this already, but I'm going to say it anyway. I mean, let's just keep praying for Kanye, you know? Like, it's, it's never too late for the Lord to do a work in his heart and in his life, but he's definitely strayed from biblical teaching. And I'm going to go to the scripture and show you what the Bible actually says about all of this in a moment. But for now, notice the bifurcation here, right? You either pray or do nothing. So the problem is people pray, but when they pray, they're not doing anything about real problems in their lives. Again, is that what the Bible teaches? That, that, that we just pray and do nothing? We're, we're going to come back and answer these in just a moment. So I'll be surprised that I'm still alive mm -hmm. every day. How did you not so-called disappear? <laughs> like, because that's a hell of a fight. Because, you know, because I'm God. And they want to disagree. I'm the God of me. And you can't tell me who I am. I can't tell y'all. I could tell y'all. It's y'all job to listen. I'm the God of me. I don't know if I'm in heaven already. And I got number one. I'm not, for all you know, I might be on like a fourth dimension version of the lifestyle. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Like I said, I must have died in this accident. It must be heaven. I feel like, you know, there's people, tech guys and shit, like Shervin or Elon. Elon always says, whatever would be the funniest outcome is what you have to you just think of like, what is the most insane version of something? And that's the version that should happen. My boy Shervin said, God or alien or universal, whatever happens, it feels like uh, victory favors the brave. Mm. Like the people that lean into it, that give, cause it's all like ears, it just threats at the end of the day. It's like, why should you fear? You know, it's another thing I don't like in Christianity, the fear of God. If God is love, why should you fear him? Boy. Again, there's just, there's a lot here, you know, but the big statement right at the outset, right, which is quite disturbing, is I am God. That's what he just said. He claims to be God. Now, he doesn't explain what that means. And, you know, there's many ways that other pagans and things, they make the same claim, but they mean different things by it. I don't know, but... Let's just, let's go ahead and start to bring the scripture into this now, and we'll weigh the things that Kanye is saying. Kanye says that he is God, but the Bible says that there is only one God, and no one else is him. Isaiah 45, verse 5, I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. Uh, he says it again in verse 6, that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Take a look at uh, verse 21. Was it not I, the Lord, and there is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior, there is none besides me. Just in case uh, the people didn't get it, he says it again, verse 22, for I am God and there is no other. This is reminiscent of the Lord's response to Job at the end of the story of Job. Job has just uh, made a bunch of challenges and uh, things to the Lord, and so then the Lord responds to Job in chapter 38, verse 4, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Take a look at verse 34. Can you lift up your voice? To the clouds, that a flood of waters may cover you? Can you send forth lightnings, that they may go and say to you, here we are? God is saying, I'm the only one who does these things. There is only one God, and no one else is God but God. That's the clear teaching of the Scripture. That's why God says in Isaiah 55, uh, verse 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. 
For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So not only are we not God, we are so unlike our Creator in very distinct ways. The Bible says that our thoughts aren't even His. Our ways are not even His. We, we are made in God's image, and that's chapter 1 of Genesis, but that does not mean that we are God. And to say that we are God is blasphemous in the extreme. I don't think that this is the first time that Kanye has made this claim to be God, but he certainly should know better, right? Like, as somebody who professed to be Christian and was supposedly taught the scriptures, you know, um, I what, what I understood when he, again, when he came out and professed faith in Christianity was that a pastor had been discipling him privately for a, a duration of time, you know? But man, what he's saying here is just horrifically inappropriate. Hey, real quick, I hope this video is blessing you. Would you do me a favor and like and subscribe to the channel? It really does help me to get this video out to more and more people. I really do appreciate it. Because you place one fear, you get another fear, you get another fear, what do you have at that point? You're easily controllable. You're easily sellable. You're easily contracted. Right, and, and then the other thing I forgot, he has a problem with um, when the Bible says to fear God. But again, apparently he has no idea why the, the Bible teaches us to fear God. Do you know why? Do you know why the Bible says this? Take a look at uh, Isaiah 11.3. This is interesting, okay? It's, it's a really weird statement if you just take it at face value, but look at this. And his delight, notice that, shall be in the fear of the Lord. That's a really weird thing to say about someone. A, a person's delight will be in fear. That doesn't make any sense if you try to take your understanding of the English word fear and then squash it down on top of the original Hebrew language. The original language, when it talks about the fear of God, is talking about something else. It's referring to reverence for God. It's, it's referring to a great respect for the Lord and for his word. It's not referring to abject terror and, and, and shaking in your boots. As a matter of fact, abject terror is looked down upon in the Bible. In Matthew chapter 25, Jesus told a parable about a servant who was condemned for not obeying his master. Why? Because he was afraid of him. He was like in abject fear of his master to the point where he basically did nothing because of it. That's not what the Lord desires in his people. And that's not what the fear of God is referring to. Again, you have to appreciate the original language, the way that the original language flows and what is actually being communicated, you know? This phrase simply refers to a holy and proper reverence and respect for God. That's why Isaiah 11 says that this person, who, by the way, in this passage is the Messiah, they will delight in the fear of the Lord. In other words, delight in respect and their reverence for God. That's also why Proverbs 10 says this, Verse 27, the fear of the Lord prolongs life, but the years of the wicked will be short. Okay, that's, that's also why it says this. Uh, chapter 14, verse 26, in the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence and his children will have a refuge. Wait a second, abject terror leads to strong confidence? No, revering the Lord and showing great respect for his word leads to strong confidence. The fear of the Lord, as it is biblically understood, leads to obeying God, living according to your purpose, and having eternal life as you obey Jesus. That's what the fear of the Lord is. And I wish that Kanye would understand that, because maybe he wouldn't be doing and saying the things that he's doing and saying right now, you know? Actually, let's circle back around and answer some of these other questions, right? Kanye suggested that all people want to do is say, well, I'm, I'm just going to pray for you and then do nothing else. It's just always like, I'm going to pray for you. And it's just like, you can actually physically do something yourself too, more than just pray. And we're so in this mentality that that's all that needs to happen. But we ain't, we ain't praying our way out of prison. We ain't yeah, the book of James literally addresses this head on. Chapter 2, verse 14, What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things they needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Look at verse 20. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? 
Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. What is he saying here? He's saying that Christianity is not merely saying a bunch of words and then doing nothing else. The Lord desires his people to spread his kingdom here on earth, to reestablish the Edenic relationship that he had with Adam and Eve all over the world. But that requires action. That requires taking care of people, of bringing God's shalom back to this broken world, one soul at a time. Take a close look at Jesus' teaching in the Sermon on the Mount. That requires action too. Christianity is not a religion of praying and doing nothing else. And by the way, I, I think actually Christians get a bad rap on this because I know a lot of Christians who are out there doing something physically to right the wrongs in our society right now. They just don't go around broadcasting it everywhere the same way people take photos of their breakfast on Instagram. I'm sure there are those who do pray and do nothing, okay? So there's, <laughs> there's always a contingent of people out there who ruin things, but you can't pin that on all Christians because that's not true of the brothers and sisters that I know. And I bet you that's not true of the brothers and sisters around you as well, or even you, probably. Finally, Kanye said that he's got a problem with Jesus. He said he, he said he prayed and Jesus did not show up. I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I didn't see Jesus show up. So I had to... Yeah. So does the Bible teach that whenever you pray, you get what you ask for? That, that, that God shows up and grants your every request? No. As a matter of fact, uh, there's a real danger in treating prayer as a veritable grocery list of requests to God. You want to know why? You remember Isaiah 55, verse 8, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways, right? They're higher than yours. If our thoughts and ways are not the Lord's, which means that the way that we think things should go may not align with the way that God thinks things should go, what do you think is going to happen when you pray, God, here's my request based on how I think things should go? What do you think the Lord is going to do, especially when his plans are different from yours? Some of the greatest moments in your life, some of the greatest opportunities for your personal growth are when God does not give you what you ask for. Somebody needs to hear that. When you have a vision of the way that you think things should go and you make moves in that direction, the Lord has no obligation to ensure that happens. As a matter of fact, the proverb says it like this, Proverbs 16, 9, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. The Lord will either establish your plans or not, but if he doesn't, does that mean, therefore, that you should have a problem with him? That you should be upset? You know, Habakkuk had a similar complaint. You remember this? In Habakkuk 1, 2, he said, he said this, he said, oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear me? Right? At this point, Habakkuk is watching his enemy uh, conquer all these nations around him, and he knows that they're coming for him and his people soon. And he's saying, Lord, why don't you stop this evil? Where are you? You know what God says? Verse 5, look among the nations. This is God's response. Look among the nations and see. Wonder and be astounded, for I am doing a work in your days that you would not believe if told. The Lord says, I'm not standing by. I'm not unaware of what's happening. I'm doing something through these events. The very thing that you don't want to happen, according to your plans and your vision, I'm working through them in order to accomplish something that you wouldn't even believe if I told you right now. The Lord, the Lord by the way, says essentially the same thing in Romans chapter 8. The Lord is working all things together for good for those who love him, to those who are called according to his purpose. And what is our response? What is our response when we pray and the Lord does not show up? Trust him. Trust him. The Lord says this in chapter 2. Look at this. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. The righteous shall live by his faith. The reality is, friends, we live every day the same way that we got saved, fully submitted in trusting the Lord. And when we pray and God does something that we didn't want— we don't get mad. We don't have a problem with Jesus. We trust that his promise holds true. He is working all things together for our good. It might not make sense for us in the moment because our thoughts are not his thoughts, but we can trust him and we can trust in his promises to us. Amen? 
Well, that was uh, that was a very interesting exercise. Um, but again, let's continue to pray for Kanye. He he needs to go back to like five years ago and remember what he was taught, uh, what he was being taught, and fully submit to the Lord and trust in Him. But it's not too late today. If the Lord can save someone like me, He can definitely save Kanye as well. Okay. Now it's your turn. What do you think about Kanye's problems with Christianity? Let me know in the comments below. I'm curious to get your thoughts. As always, if you did make it this far, you got to join the Patreon community. Even just to read the Bible with me, we're studying the, the Gospel of Matthew right now. It's totally for free. You can also get exclusive access to videos like this before they make it to YouTube if you jump onto one of my support tiers, which, by the way, I can only make these videos because of your support, and I'm so grateful for that. So anyway, all of the benefits for the Patreon and the link for that is below. In the meantime, I'm going to saunter off, but I will return soon with more videos. And for now, I'll say ta-ta.